Hey everybody, this is Rhino and we are back to another live stream of Hearthstone. Today is Monday, November 27th, Black M Monday, Cyber Monday, is that what it's called? We've got, we've had the whole weekend to regain daily quests, let's trade that one out. I need to play like three games with the Warlock if I have to keep that one, but since I only have to actually get two things done today, a watch and learn and a warrior is playing 50 warrior class cards actually is all I need to do. So let's just start by saying if we can watch and learn and spectate and we'll go over the news. And if we have an accelerated experience today, that's not a terrible thing because we uh, frankly, uh, I screwed up. I've been screwing up for the entire winter, and, and it, this seems like this is pretty consistent. Although, oddly, I have just passed, I believe yesterday was the three-year anniversary of this channel, uh, of my first video that I put, put up. Uh, so... I've been doing this for three years, and and I was clearly at that time not doing anything else when I decided to just start putting videos up. Uh, in all realisticness, it was probably a year before uh, the point where I started to think, oh yeah, I can put this on. Uh, record my gameplay. I, for a year I was probably just playing video games. Uh, so, uh, very consistent and that led to my decision to, to, to start this channel. In three years this channel hasn't blown up, but I'm not sure any channel can really blow up on YouTube. Uh, it's a very different thing than it was say five years ago or ten years ago uh, where if I had simply done the same thing that I am doing I probably would have much more uh, many more subscribers many more views uh, at the very least I'd have many more games that I've recorded and played uh, a lot of the games I've played on PC are, have been repeats of games I had played before I started my channel. So, uh, there's a level of catch-up I'm still Time doing. To die. That being said, at a certain point I'm going to run out of games and I can definitely feel that. Particularly AAA games, there's only so many of those that are playable on PC and still worth playing. Um, at a certain point, I'll have to shift over to playing even the bad AAA or A tier or even uh, a lot of the indie games just to to have content and footage, and it will be a a big shift from mostly I play games that I think are either fun or have a good reason to cover to me just covering almost everything. Uh, so, as far as my three-year anniversary, nothing, there's nothing special I want to do with that. Uh, my channel is going good. It's, it's improved a lot since I live started live streaming. If I was live streaming three years ago, I would have almost definitely improved my subscriptions and health. But I can't really do anything about that now. But that's not even the other thing. The thing I screwed up. I started this this conversation by saying I screwed up. I, I screwed up in two different ways, much like this guy screwed up. Um, one, I've just been very busy with setting up the RetroPie project, which is a project that will never pay off on this channel, other than me talking about it in on rare occasions. It's just something I'm doing for myself. So I've been spending a lot of time with that. Uh, two, I've been also just taking a lot of breaks. And taking days off and not doing anything. I think a lot of that probably is around the fact that I'm streaming Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Whereas before I was 
streaming or playing Hearthstone every three days, uh, that's a slight shift that makes makes it makes more gameplay happen on Hearthstone than I would per like, and uh, and it just takes away more time. <sighs> and then I had just been so out of it. I didn't when I started to record Rise of the Tomb Raider. I didn't do any testing at all. Like the audio was totally out of whack. It was at 25%. It was way too quiet. I said to 50%. It was still too quiet. I said to 75%. It was still too quiet. Now I've got it back up to 100%. Maybe that means that the audio in this is a little too loud now. Um, if that is the case, let me know the stream and I'll turn it down. I'll check this video after that, after this stream and see. Uh, and Rise of the Tomb Raider is just one of those graphics pushers games. I think it came out a month or two after The Witcher 3 and my video card can't really handle it at above high settings. It still can do high settings fine. Uh, and frankly, it can handle it at above high settings if you're just gonna play the game. But you if you're fall? trying to record it, uh, you need that extra GPU power and that extra CPU power to to be able to record and play it at higher settings. This is one of those scenarios where if or when I ever I get a new video card, my secondary video card, which isn't that good, might still very well be helpful because I might be able to set up open broadcast software to just encode and record all the footage using a completely separate video card while it's something like a Titan or GTX 980, uh, 1080 or something like that uh, uh, is solely focused on doing the highest settings possible at 1080p, which the next generation of video cards should have no problem with that at all. Uh, but because I didn't set any of that and I just powered through, and partially because I, I'm doing 30 minute recordings, uh, and that just helps on some rare occasions to let me power through, uh, I put several hours into the to Rise of the Tomb Raider, and then I realized the problem, and then, and now I need to go back and and start it all over again, and that's what I did this morning. Um, so now I'm almost back to where I was. Rise of the Tomb Raider has some problems. It takes about four hours. It feels like to get to an open world section where you're actually playing the game. It seems like it takes away control from you Job very done. much uh, and and just makes you see a cutscene and then maybe you walk from one end of a hallway to another end of a hallway and then it shows you another cutscene. It definitely doesn't trust the players. The There's a tutorial tomb that you have to do in the game uh, that takes place in Syria, which is the only section of the game that takes place in Syria. The rest of it's in Siberia, uh, which feels like somebody just had typoed uh, Siberia at once and, and Square Enix Japan just went with it. Uh, the uh, after that first tomb, the next tomb is just labeled as an optional tomb and you can literally just walk away from it and exit the area. And it's not like the optional tomb is hard. It's a very simplistic, physics-based platforming puzzle that shouldn't take anybody more than 12 minutes to solve and everybody should play it. But the Square Enix is so desperate to turn Tomb Raider as a series from being more puzzle oriented and into being a first person shooter. That's why they put in this whole multiplayer. That's why there's trading cards. They, they want to get those microtransactions. They want to get those uh, those ever incurring fees. They're, the game is 
crummy with DLC. It's it's so sleazy and and so bad. And at the end of the day, I think I I'm only like I'm 13% done after three hours of the main story. And I don't think there's gonna be a lot of playing with the multiplayer. Like, I don't think I'll be able to find any people. And even if I was able to find people, what's going on here? Nobody's moving. Uh, maybe I just need to inspect it. Darn it! What has happened here? Oh no. Leave. Let's see if we can come back and see if that'll work. So yeah, I'm I'm playing Rise of the Tomb Raider. I need to get that done. I need to have so much paperwork I need to do too, and I haven't gotten around to any of that. Uh, I'm falling behind. I think everything is scheduled for a while, but I'm not 100% certain because I haven't been on on the ball with making sure things are scheduled for release. Uh, so there's just a lot of stuff. As far as end of the year content, I'm gonna almost certainly just spend like one day around uh, well played. Somewhere between Christmas and December 31st to, to do an end of the year content. Uh, very possibly we'll do it during the live stream. Whatever live stream ends up uh, in between that. Uh, My seal for Argon! The, maybe, maybe not. Um, because I can do a little bit of a different footage for end of the year. Game of the Year stuff. Uh, there's a lot of end of the year Game of the Year stuff that's being walked on right now for other podcasts and things. And we're not really getting a lot of new AAA games getting announced. There is a ton of, of bad games that are on Steam because of Steam Direct. That they, they've hit a new milestone of having over 6,000 games released this year. Uh, honestly, I haven't seen them, which is both a good thing and a bad thing, because that also tells me that if there are any small independent gyms out there, they're, they are probably getting flooded out and I'm not seeing those either. And that's going to be a bigger issue once I run out of the AAA games and, and don't know by name the games I want to play. There's still a significant number of scenes I haven't ever touched or ever played. Though, so that won't happen in the next couple of years. Uh, for our first bit of news, the British gaming, ga the Vis British Gambling Commission is worried about the potential risk of loot boxes. So, yet another industry uh, monitor is. Uh, you want to cast a spell? I want to cast a spell. Uh, stepped in and given their opinion here is an interesting one uh, from PC gamer saying how steam trading card idling works and will it get you vac banned believe it or not some people collect Steam's virtual trading cards no it's true the why part is immaterial uh, some people are just OCD uh, steam trading cards in particular is really only playing to people with uh, addictive personalities and gambling tendencies. It's no person who doesn't have one of those uh, disorders would have any interest in it at all. Uh, so, how Steam Island works? Uh, Job's done. Basically, you start a program, uh, start a game, and let it run. Uh, I have certainly idled games that way where I've just started the game and let it run and not and then alt tabbed it out however there are programs that will do it for you uh, they will launch programs and 
the the idea is that it will uh, close the program and launch the next program if you have a bunch of uh, programs you get more training cards fast and I certainly have made money selling trading cards. Uh, not a lot, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was $25 to $30 worth of, of money over three years just selling trading cards yeah. and other things you get from idling a game. And certainly other people have made it, uh, made a lot of money doing that in the way you get booster packs which get you more cards is also like weird because if you have a lot more badges and you play a lot uh, a, a wide variety of cards you're more of games you're more likely to get booster packs which then you can turn around and sell uh, you want to cast a spell I want to cast so, a spell yeah, there, there's a lot of thought that the training card market might be money laundering in a lot of ways, That, but I'm not sure exactly how you would do that. You would have to be the creator of a game that made it trading cards, which they, Steam has not made it more difficult for you to make a cheap game with trading cards. It has to have a wider number of people purchase the game before it can have cards inside of it. And I suppose then, if you got through the process and your card game did have trading cards, since a cut does go back to Valve and a cut does go back to the creator, uh, you would then use, I suppose, illegal money or stolen credit cards to buy as many of those trading cards as possible and sell as many of those trading cards as possible just so that well there's played. more transactions that the the creator of the game can make money off of it doesn't seem like it would be a, the best way to do it and as far as will steam Someday island get you banned according like to pc game gaming Someday uh pc gamer like it's not clear whether valve thinks of this practice but people have been using steam idle utilities for like years you. with few issues steam uh, Steam Island Master Just documentation like and Effie accused one of VAC errors if you run the utility utility along a secured game simultaneously. So make sure you close out uh, of it to exit Steam protected by Steam Guard. Which how many Yeah, I don't, I don't know how many games actually have Steam Guard or not, though. Um, the truth of it, though, is uh, there's not a lot you're gonna get from idling. If you want to trade in cards, you can just a normal person can just let the program run and I'll tab out of it. There's no reason to use the utility unless you're running some kind of scammer scheme and if you're running a scammer scheme then you're taking your chances. Man. I'm pretty sure I have all these cards. Honestly, as far as my main account, like I don't think there's a high chance I'll ever just be able to open a pack of of new common cards, a common pack, and get any more of the legendaries. Like, it, it just seems too unlikely. Alright, now we're actually in the gameplay, so we just need to find a warrior uh, deck, and that shouldn't be too hard. Let's see, this enrage armor deck is probably all I've got. So we'll take it and play. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of other people getting retweeted by Hearthstone. I, I guess I can do weapon too, but uh, for getting 500 wins after playing for over three years, 
Uh, which, it would really suck if they put in an update that had something above 500 ranked ones. I'm particularly not anywhere close to it. There's an article about a game I've already talked about. Uh, I don't know if the name I mentioned is Jane. Truber, a U you with two dots on top. BDR Brook. Trooper Brook, a sci fi mystery graphic adventure with handcrafted animations. Uh, I don't think it's out yet. And I just closed the page, so. Shouldn't have done that. There's a free game called the, the Zium Museum, Z-I-U-M, which is a virtual gallery. Is it in VR? I don't think so. It looks like you just... It, it doesn't look like any of this art is actual art from famous people either. It looks like it's art created by the creator of the game. Which, okay, fair enough. That's probably a very decent way to show off what you can do if you're just an artist with a small ability to program. Uh, I know in the Stanley Parable, there's a certain point where you just walk through a museum of the game you're in, and that was kind of cool. Uh, Uh, there's an article here, Mother Defends 14-Year-Old Son Suit by Epic Over Fortnite Cheat Video. So, uh, Epic Games filed a civil complaint against two alleged Fortnite cheaters. Uh, and, and, and they filed an actual lawsuit against it. Uh, it comes to light that one of the defendants is a 14 year old who Epic Games sued because the teenager appealed against the developer's DMCA takedown request of a YouTube video revealing how to use the cheese. Legally, Epic Games either had to withdraw the DMCA takedown request or file suit against the teenager. The developer chose, chose the latter. So, this is the thing that has terrified YouTubers and terrified me in particular uh, more than anything else. And it's why almost nobody appeals a actual DMC takedown uh, on YouTube. It's because they don't want to get sued, they don't want to go to court, and, and they don't have the money for it. I mean, if you're a YouTuber, this is a 14-year-old person, and I wonder if this 14-year-old uh, appealed this without the permission of his parents, which inherently might make the appeal uh, also not legal. So, while, while Epic Games could sue a 14-year-old, I don't you think a 14-year-old uh, can counter a DMCA claim without a representative of some sort. But this certainly Back makes Epic work. look awful, and they totally shouldn't have done this. Uh, this is the counterbalance. His, and his mother sent a letter to the court uh, um, Fortnite requires parental consent to be played my, by minors which he never granted so Fortnite is in fault pro, I would say at least partially because of that uh, Epic Games cannot claim mass profit loss because the game is free to play. She claims Epic is using her son as a scapegoat because it can't 
curb cheaters. Her son's name and details were released publicly, which due to her son made no money from live streaming. Uh, the mother called for the district judge to dis dismiss the case as the infraction does not equate the serving of a minor by a major gaming company. Uh, Epic statement suggests that they're determined to see this through. So yeah, now Epic Games looks like a total jerk suing a 14-year-old and uh, and there's no way they can get out of this without committing to defeat themselves. Uh, and this was just a bad move on their part. Uh, they should have clearly, um, One for all and clearly, um, looked and seen that this was a kid and chose to not enforce or selectively enforce their, their copyright in this instance. Let's see. We do this. I guess I could have done this. The blade be thirsty. And now I can kill this guy. Or I can this. I guess there's really no reason. <laughs> There's no statement here whether the, the mother allowed him to make a YouTube channel in the first place or allowed him to file a DCA um, And that, that also kind of puts YouTube in a weird position because then that also means that YouTube may have honored an invalid DMCA counterclaim which uh, at the end of the day all of this is just the problems with the DMCA and, and how it kind of sucks for everybody let's see let's do this and rule its ashes. We could deal one damage to our minions. Or we could do something like this. Let's start some trouble. Battle the So yeah, that's that's basically saying, yeah, if somebody put a DMCA on uh, Thing on me, I, I suppose I would, I would have to either we appeal it or, secrets. or just take the copyright strike. Uh, we desperately need to fix that law. It is not good. It does not help anybody. It doesn't cause anything but complaints and it has done nothing to really fix the rampant number of copyright violators that happen every day like every day I look on YouTube and there's more video live streams that claim they're showing Rick or Morty I don't bother to click on them um, or Family Guy or something else and it's and you wouldn't Last. You wouldn't be able to, to do this if they would just fix their algorithm, but they seem, YouTube seems to be very reluctant to fix their algorithm unless they're forced to do it. Battle commencing. Job done. There's a game, I think it may be called, called A Road That May Lead Nowhere. There's 
just designed around the idea of uh, I'm drunk, the, dead, driving uh, in kind of a Sony outfit. Uh, it's an itch.io free game you can download. Um, so it's it's not very complicated, but if you wanted a kind of low polygon graphics game where you're driving a car on an empty road, I guess that's the game for you. There's probably at least half a dozen better driving simulators out there uh, that are specifically even designed around the idea of uh, battle commencing. Of driving cars like truck simulator and such. Star Ocean, The Last Hope for PC uh, Remaster has put out a flashy launch tra uh, trailer. Let's watch that. Uh, PC gamers filling my web my webpage with ads, even with an ad blocker. I heard PC Gamer is even worse if you try to watch it on mobile with no ad blocker on. That it, you literally can't read an article at all. Uh, and hardly, I heard this from Gary Witta, who used to work, I believe, for PC Gamer. <laughs> uh, Star Ocean is an interesting one because it's, I believe, either a PlayStation 1 or Dreamcast one of those very early uh, games that uh, there was a JRPG before before all JRPGs became battle commencing became solely focused around Final Fantasy uh, this one seems to be half elf people half half space flight you require and I mean that sure looks really good like nice 3d cartoon uh -huh. animated characters uh, nice looking semi-realistic starships spaceships uh, looks uh -huh. like either there's a lot of cutscenes or space battles or, or just a lot of cutscenes in general uh, it might be deceptively uh, different points where you actually have to play the game. Battle commencing. So go Thank you. So I may have lost here. If she has like a six damage spell. Aha! Which he, she will. Aha! So all he needed was one fireball to win. Aha! And she would have won no matter what. So Star Ocean on the PC is cool, 4K. And it seems more like a real time four, four character RPG. Actually, this looks playable. It looks like something that's more designed around. Console style gameplay than uh, mouse and keyboard with lots of things, uh, with lots of buttons and, and actions needed. So maybe I could enter the Star Ocean series. Uh, let's see. Garrosh versus. I don't know Rexa. if this is the. Uh, let's go. How begin the order of star ocean death. games would go let's see if we can search and find out uh, on wikipedia let's see star ocean is a franchise of action role playing and the action role playing is very appealing to me if i'm gonna play for a japanese company called triace which and is published and owned by square enix formerly enix um, so hopefully it's not full of microtransactions and, and loot boxes like Rise of the Tomb Raider, but I, I think Square Enix probably learned their lesson maybe even a little earlier than, than others. Um, fans of science fiction and space travel 
made the game, so it's, it's more focused on that. The games released were Star Ocean in 1996 for the Super Famicom, and it was never released outside of Japan. So, that would explain why I it. And then, however, it was unofficially translated through a ROM hacking, uh, and the resulting game can play, be played through emulation. Okay. Uh, let's see. Then the next one is Star Ocean Second Story, which happened in 1998. So it's it's not really the oldest of game series. Let's see, play a minion, deal one damage to. Let's try this. Actually, I should have attacked first. Job done. Um, then Star Ocean Blue Sphere was 2001. Star Ocean The End of Time was 2003. And then there were six years between then. Uh, between the game for Star Ocean The Last Hope, which is the remake that they're making. And then 2016 had Star Ocean Integrity and Faithlessness. Let's see. The second story was released on PlayStation in Japan and North America eventually. Uh, did that not work? Job's done. Why did that not work? Oh, to all damaged minions. I should read the cards. Star Ocean Blue uh, Sphere is the direct sequel to Second Story. And it came for the Game Boy Color, so they were all over different consoles. That explains why it's a lesser known title. Star Ocean Until the End of Time was on the PlayStation 2. Uh, Star Ocean The Last Hope was on the Xbox 360. There's a free to play card game that was on Cree mobile phone social network. Uh, whatever that is, <laughs> that's something I've never heard of. Okay. I need to remember just, I'm, all I'm doing here is playing cards. Storm, Ocean, Integrity, and Faithlessness was announced in 2015 for the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. Uh, so it takes place between the second story until the end of time. Uh, there's specific dates they're mentioning of when these things are happening in the game. Fake, like, fake dates, for instance. This game, uh, Integrity and Faithlessness, happens in 537 SD, whatever that means. Battle detected. Let's see. This. Let's start some level. There we go. Uh, Stam Star Ocean Amnesia was uh, it was released in Japan on 2016 for Android and iOS, so it's all over the place. Um, and then the North American releases uh, narrows it down. So. I guess you're kind of in a weird point where the the question would be can I do can I play Star Ocean that's available here without losing a lot it begins battle commencing this is almost certainly this. Oh, it's a bear trap again. Let's see, so... The remake is Star Ocean The Lost Hope. And...
does it work? Last Hope is a prequel to the original Star Ocean and takes place on Earth in SD0010 or AD 2096. So we now very well know I wonder. where we're gonna be uh, rich. Where the Strike. So yeah, this reboot might be the beginning of something great. So that, that's definitely one that I'm gonna put in my wish list. Uh, Air Ocean, The Last Hope, HD remake. Play it now. They probably, if it sells well, will come out with a remaster of the original Star Ocean, which would then have you play the game in a chronological order that was not available to the original players. How much? Is yeah. That, that looks very interesting. Something new, something refreshing, something that would be a nice step between no looks playing fail. something like Persona, which, which, ideally, there's not, I think, a great way to play all the Persona games on PC. Uh, if there's even a way to play any of them on PC, there might actually not be any of it. Uh, Safety restrictions offline. Harvesting oh. servos engaged. The end has come. Uh, and then Final Fantasy is also a very long series, so yeah. It, that that seems like it, it is not a triple A title, but maybe a double A or single A title that that I could play and not have to feel like I have to learn so much or, or even worry too much about it. So I'm very, very interested in that, but I won't get around to it for probably years. Apparently it got, somebody made a game called Double Hitler and now they're making an RPG called Slasher's Keep. Let's watch the trailer of this. Oh, alright. It's a very 3D comic book style animation. Of a dungeon crawler, what uh, now? but it seems also that your uh, it, it seems that you're mostly right. fighting with weapons next to uh, attacks. So if I do this, I'll kill both of them. If I do this. I'll kill both of them, so let's start Overdrive. With this. Engage. There we go. Hmm. Double Hitler, it was one of the best free games on PC. I don't even know what that's about. I, I guess I do wanna go back. I dream and the world So yeah, Slashers so Keep it. Another one that I I'd be interested in checking out some more uh, but yeah um, uh, yeah there's nothing really stopping me from doing that I might just spotlight a game like that and not uh, what now not focus solely on magic detected let's see overdrive I very may well be able to just win here. Job's done. Yeah, okay. Double Hitler. It's two kids dressed up as Hitler with one kid standing on the shoulders of another kid. 
and it's a pop ripoff. Where the main thing is that you're just trying not to fall over and expose that you aren't actually Hitler. Okay. Double Hitler. Interesting one. Interesting one to do. Let's see, how are we doing as far as this? I suppose we've made a decent amount of progress and we have gone 45 minutes so let's just break up here and then make another recording that's it for this recording stay tuned if you're watching live as always i ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want to friend or follow me on basically any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below Thank you for watching, have a good evening.